Good morning, everybody, and a very big welcome to today's Draytech webinar, uh, which we call the complete 2021 Draytech proposition in 45 minutes. Uh, uh, so the idea is we will be presenting for around about 45 minutes and we'll be allowing about 15 minutes for qu questions and answers afterwards. So uh, hopefully within the hour, uh, you'll have had the full pro uh, proposition and you'll have your questions an answered. So we kind of got a bit of an abbreviation there called the new, new normal. And what we're gonna, we're gonna talk about really is how things have kind of progressed from kind of lockdown last year into what we see as the way forward. And we're gonna wrap uh, some of the Draytech solutions around this so you can see how Draytech can potentially help in this new new normal environment, showcasing all the product sets and solutions. So I'm Julian, I head up sales and marketing for Draytech and I'll be doing the vast majority of this presentation today and welcome to you all. Okay, so just going into what this is all about. So this is designed for all of our customers, uh, the organizations that use our product, and our reseller partners that resell the product. So if you're either one of those, you are, you're very welcome to this presentation today. Um, so we're gonna showcase um, our solution sets around kind of how we see the future going for this kind of new normal. So we're gonna spend a little time talking about the challenges of working from home, social distancing, uh, we're going to introduce uh, a little thing about the Internet of Things, IoT, big buzzword in the in the in the industry today, and we're going to feature something called IP camera management, which is, uh, if you like, one of our first IoT features that we thought might be interesting. Uh, we're then going to work on some centralised stuff. How do you uh, control things remotely, and how do you manage a dispersed workforce or lots and lots of remote sites? Uh, a kind of head office function and we'll do positioning and benefits so to this hopefully we can show you our complete product range and how it all works and how it might benefit so firstly what makes Draytech special what makes us unique much abused term as we know these days so I think one thing I will say uh, that I think does make our make us unique is this combination of, of, of things here so first of all we own our own intellectual property on all the hardware we provide uh, we own the intellectual property on the operating system, which is the clever stuff, uh, and obviously we develop our firmware. So the product you get from Draytech is hardware designed, software designed, firmware designed uh, right from the start. Uh, UK is the largest worldwide region, uh, which means compared to many IT organisations, we punch way above our weight in the UK. So this means that the products you see in the UK are nicely fine-tuned to the UK market. We need new features. We've got something particularly special. We get very, very good response from Draytech. All the support is UK-based. So you can see a picture of our office there in Boreham Woods, which isn't populated very much at the moment, as most of us are working from home, but it still is going. Um, so we have you know, a team of 10 people totally focused on Draytech to give you, our end-user customers, and, and you, our resellers, uh, full support when you're, you're installing or trying to recommend a product. And we've been going quite a few years. So you add all that lot together, I think there's very few vendors that could claim the same. A bit about our pedigree, um, over a million products sold in the UK, loads of companies using Draytech products. A bit hard to get exact market share numbers as you, you can't really get off the Gartner group, but if we speak to all our very, very large resellers who are selling a whole range of products, we know we have something like 30% market share of the SME market for uh, broadband access, which we're very proud of. Huge growth in our management system, which we're going to talk about later. This is our ACS system, which is uh, certainly for our large end user customers and our resellers is a major reason for using Draytech. And as you can see with my smiley face, we, we won um, uh, the uh, PC Pro best router brand of the year 10 times out of the last 12 years, which we're very, very proud of. So if you're using the products or, or, or reselling them, you're in really good company. A lot of other, other organizations really like the product. So a bit about what we're going to cover today in terms of agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about, firstly, some, some sort of broadband challenges you get um, working at businesses at home. And this is really, how do we get that network to have continuity of service? Uh, how do we get service? How do we get business continuity? Uh, we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about that. We're then going to talk about Wi-Fi challenges. We're going to feature lockdown for sure, but the um, Wi-Fi challenges in, in any building are always kind of similar. The answer to any sort of Wi-Fi question always tends to be, well, that depends. And hopefully we can help take the vagaries out of this Wi-Fi challenge and show you some really good solutions to help you sort that out. Uh, we're then gonna talk about connecting things together using wires, uh, moving into switching, but then on to internet, internet of Things. We've got a little feature about IP camera management, which is really, really neat and great for all those organizations and individuals that want to 
have um, you know CCTV in their in, in their operation. We're then going to go on to um, centralised issues. How do you manage this all from the from HQ, moving into management and so on and so on. So quite a, quite a lot to cover. Uh, hopefully some interesting themes, and we're going to wrap our product set around that. So just by way of inter sort of introduction, uh, hopefully this is a picture we can all be kind of familiar with. Um, you know, a lot more working from home now. Um, when we are at home, we're sharing the internet with all sorts of other individuals in the house or in the business. You know, students, uh, young children, uh, various people there might want uh, access to the internet for a whole raft of reasons. Um, so this puts huge pressure on the internet and indeed the Wi-Fi. And of course, similarly in the office, uh, all the apps are now trending to the cloud. Uh, E-commerce is now a key part of uh, how we interact with our customers. So lots coming across the web on that. All CRM seems to be on cloud-based now. And of course, we've got new systems that you wouldn't necessarily associate with the internet now starting to be adopted by, with IP technology. So phone systems is one very good example of that, but also the system we're talking on today, uh, you know, uh, across GoToWebinar is a similar sort of thing to that. So loads of people on, on, on that in, in the office. And of course, wherever you are, there's a big fight for internet resources. Um, you can get outages, uh, you can get problems with interference, and you can get problems with lots of congestion on the line with too many people wanting access at one particular time, which can, can, be, can start to become a major problem. So basically, if I pose the question, what happens when the internet fails, it's normally pretty bad news. Um, you know, disaster at home, people want to get access for a whole raft of reasons. Uh, Maybe like me, sitting at home as I am today, you know, doing this webinar to several hundred people. You know, if the internet failed, it would be fairly, 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 you know, drastic to this particular call. So, if the internet fails, it is a major problem, uh, major nuisance, major problem. Could even be business critical. So, this is a major, major issue. So, in order to show how Dratic can help you address that, we're going to introduce our first product and our first flagship business class feature. Uh, which we call broadband failover. And this first feature, or this first element of the feature, is going to focus on failover to 4G and I, I guess what will ultimately become 5G. And here you can see uh, we have a router on the left, which is in our home or office. We're nicely connecting to the internet, but we've been uh, uh, forward thinking and we've got a product that's got a SIM card slot in the back. So we, we plug our data SIM card in the back uh, everything's going fine on the internet. You can see this by this uh, uh, this uh, green dot going backwards and forwards. Then we have some sort of problem. Um, could be anything. And what this router will do is effectively automatically pick up that the main connection is gone, the WAN 1 connection, and will it automatically fail over to WAN 3? In other words, um, uh, stopping that connection down the VDSL link that's failed and forcing the connection over WAN3, which is uh, which is the 4G connection. The term we, we give to generic cellular is LTE, by the way, which we're going to be using later on in this presentation, just so you get an idea of some of the jargon we're using. So that, that all occurs. Um, it picks up the connections failed. It automatically reroutes over 4G. Um, no, if, no, no, no notice to the users, or maybe very fractional notice, very, very minimal. Uh, and their service is completely resumed. So that's a really, really good, neat feature to use in a Drotec product. And you can see there, kind of picture of a, a slot in the back where you can put SIM card. Actually, a lot of the, a lot of the newer products now we have actually have two SIM card slots, so you've got a couple of options there as well. The other really neat, get you out of trouble solution that you get with a Drotec router is something we call our wireless WAN feature. So I guess everyone's familiar with using wireless, but with this particular feature, you can piggyback on a different form of broadband to, to kind of save the day. So we've got a situation here where the main connection is going just as we had previously, then there's a failure. And we've got a friendly next door neighbor who has a router and has a Wi-Fi network. And obviously you need to ask the permission of your neighbor first, fairly obviously, or the business next door to you, but with that permission and with that setup, what can effectively happen is that the router can connect to the wireless network of, of the next door neighbor and then effectively start communicating over that, over that connection. So again, just like 4G took over to continue the connection, you can piggyback on the next door neighbor to continue that connection as well. And actually this is often used 
fairly simply on a mobile phone. We, we're all familiar with the, of, of the mobile phone hotspot capability that you know, we tend to use and we want to, we want to get access to. You know, we're in a hotel or somewhere, we want to connect our laptop to the internet. Brilliant thing to do to the brilliant thing to use for that. You can do the same thing on the router. So a real, really neat, get you out of trouble. Mobile phone into wireless hotspot mode. Uh, router can be configured to connect to that uh, mobile phone and therefore the day, the day is saved. So two really neat, very simple broadband failure options you can use with a Draytech router. So that's failover, but of course other things can affect um, good use of the internet. Again, what I'm doing today is a very good example. Uh, if I was doing email or transferring files or something and there's a bit of a break, it probably, probably wouldn't matter. But if I'm on a call today, and I've got a bit of a break or someone in the house is hogging too much bandwidth, this could really affect the quality of this call. So another really neat feature here, which is especially useful for uh, the congested sort of home and office networks you find is something called quality of service, traffic prioritization. Uh, not time to go to this into great depth, but what you can effectively do is give a certain type of traffic or certain users priority over everybody else. So if you look at option one here, you can segment the traffic by the type. So for example, uh, the router can be configured to say if it's a Zoom or a Teams call or a voice over IP connection, automatically you get high priority of bandwidth, which means if there's other things going on the network, that will not affect that call. You can also segment by type of user. So maybe these particular two users always get the priority. Maybe it's mum and dad or something, or the two senior members of the household. <clears throat> And this is quite useful for things like homework. Uh, you can segment by the time of the day. So it may well be that it's uh, um, kind of you've got this, um, uh, people can access a, 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 a network at certain times of the day, but you may want to restrict it at others. Maybe it's good for homework in the evening and so on. So you've got three different ways in which you can segment data all to make sure you've got that great internet experience for the people that really need it at all times. A few, few more business, business class features. Many of you will know Draytic for its very strong VPN capability. Some, some people say we brought VPN to the masses when it was a very complex, expensive technology. So you can use our smart VPN clients, just download it to a laptop or device that you're connecting to the internet on. That will there, uh, connect to a VPN concentrator at HQ to ensure that your connection is nice and secure. That's really good for onesie twosie type connections. If you've got like an office or a home where you want permanent VPN access for all the, all the devices, you can have VPN embedded in the router and then the, there's, a, there's a VPN setting for that. So we're, we're well known for that. Many, many organizers, organizations use Draytech for uh, pushing out to home workers or pushing out to branch offices. That's a very, very uh, a, a great feature from Draytech there. And we will cover this a little bit later. Obviously one aspect of VPN is the remote site. Another aspect of VPN is concentration at HQ. And our, our latest and greatest uh, VPN concentrator, the 3910, uh, will enable you to support up to 500 VPN tunnels. So this could be the center of a very, very large network with high speed gigabit links coming in. And just finally, finalizing the sort of key business class feature, and another. Um, a uh, very topical feature is what we call web content filtering. Uh, this is uh, provided by a subscription-based service that we put, we supply called Global View, which is available from your supplier. Uh, and this enables you to do category blocking of a whole range of sites. I mean, many of you might be familiar with sort of whitelist and blacklist, where you can pick specific URLs and block them. Um, isn't long before you've got hundreds and hundreds of URLs you want to block, so it can become a little bit impractical that. But using this service, um, you know, for example, if there's just a very simple child protection setting, you can click and that just uh, blocks off all the obvious nasties, or you can break it down by very specific things like, uh, I don't know, social media, uh, chat sites, um, sports, that sort of thing, gaming, uh, very easy to do. So uh, click, click, a, click a tick box and that will block access to all those types of sites. Um, you can also use this with the other features to ensure this might be restricted to certain individuals. So some people can have one level of web content filtering and others a different one. So that's a really, really neat feature as well, all available on subscription. So just to talk a little bit about the specific products, the failover products that do 4G um, backup 
are, are have, have got something called an L suffix in the name. So we've got Viger 2865, which by the way is a brand new business class router that we launched early part of this month. It supersedes the popular Viger 2862. So it's new, it's got a few more LAN ports, it's much faster, all with the latest technology. And with the LAC, you get this built-in dual SIM card slot in the back. Uh, the sort of younger brother of this, the 2620, really effective for this as well. Um, 2865 is a multi-WAN product, 2620 is a single WAN product. So you may find 2620 more, more suitable for home use, possibly small office, 2865 possibly for the larger offices. So look, at, look out for the L suffix and the products for those that support the 4G. And just to spread that out a little bit, um, top left I've got the 2865 kind of high spec um, business class branch office router, bottom right the 2620LN, uh, which is the one I just mentioned. Also, if you look at the bottom left, this is a relatively recent announcement. This is our 2927, which is designed for FTTP, fiber to the premises, or fiber cable um, gigabit connections. So those of you migrating from DSL to fiber may be interested in that particular product set, really, really successful product. And top right, you've got the non 4G option of the 2865 called the 2765, which is again for uh, slightly less demanding applications with a single WAN. So not time to go through those in great depth, but those, those four uh, really good products to take a look at if you're looking for your next um, solution. So just to summarize, why would you wake up one day and decide, you know what, I want to buy a Draytech router? Well, here, here's some good reasons why. First of all, you've got fantastic quality, you've got all that critical acclaim, and you've got something that is made from, you know, from the grass upwards uh, by one organization called Draytech that's got a great pedigree. You can really trust a Draytech product. You've got all that, those features for um, trans transferring a broadband connection if the main one fails to a secondary one. Talk about wireless WAN and I talked about LTE. And we've got some really great traffic prioritization tools to ensure that um, a multitude of users uh, using a net using the network will not affect critical connections uh, using the cross feature VPN for secure connection and finally web content filtering so a whole bunch of reasons why a Draytech router might be the right thing for you so I'm now going to move on to another section we're going to start introducing kind of Wi-Fi now and we've, we've kind of coined this term the sort of new new normal sounds a bit horrendous I know or maybe it's a post new normal or you know whatever is now happening after we've had all that shock of lockdown last year, we, we, whatever works for you is fine. I think what we've, what we've kind of seen is that we're now very much used to home working and uh, of course it does have its challenges, uh, no one's denying that, uh, everybody crammed in the house, uh, children at home I know is a huge issue for, me, for, for many people but hopefully that is, is, is uh, going to get to normalise soon. But I think what is undeniable for many individuals is that work-life balance has actually improved. You know, we can now spend time with our family, we can have breakfast together, we can go on those walks, and we've got a little bit more time to spend on the family, which I think has been a positive thing mainly. And I think the other interesting thing is, I think whilst many businesses were sort of terrified of this, you know, used to people being in the office, uh, keep an eye on people, you know, nine to five, all the rest of it. I think what's what's happened is that productivity for people working home has been very very good uh, people have worked hard they, they have been productive we, we've seen the adoption of these collaborative tools like teams and zooms and so on which I know have morphed to, uh, as well to make them a lot a lot better and I think many businesses are rethinking this return to work you know do we actually want to do it um, you know if, if we've got happy happy employees that have got good work-life balances and they're working excellently well why shouldn't we report why shouldn't we support that and of course you've got other organizations thinking about well maybe we should think about hot desking do we need this big head office do we need a you know a, a workstation for everybody in, the, in in a branch office so this is all definitely changing we're seeing i think a new new, new normal if you like a, a more sophistication of working at home with more flexible working practices And of course, in doing doing that, maybe whilst we possibly cobbled a bit of a solution together as best we could to sort of go through this temporary lockdown situation, you know, we see all, we organisations and individuals start to think, well, actually, maybe this is going to be a permanent way that we work. So you've got the example there, maybe the 
the shed we we updated becomes a more sophisticated outbuilding we can use as a bit of an office uh, maybe that corner of the attic we tried to put together becomes you know a, a, a room that uh, we can use as an office as, as well as as, a, as other sort of home functions so in doing so of course we recognize a number of things homes are not necessarily built for business use um, you've got issues uh, particularly when it comes to Wi-Fi how do I extend Wi-Fi to the place I want to work is it down the garden is it up in the attic uh, guess what? Everyone's doing it. So we've now got this proliferation of Wi-Fi everywhere. So you try and, you know, log into your Wi-Fi wherever you may be. And what do you see? Lots and lots of Wi-Fi networks that all interfere with each other and can cause, you know, problems when you're trying to connect. You've got building construction as well. Thick walls, multiple rooms can all affect it. And, and really, I think what many individuals and organizations are recognizing is that you know the standard free wireless router that comes with the, with the isp whilst you know probably pretty good at you know at, at access to the internet probably nothing wrong with it it's not broken um doesn't really cut it for these more sophisticated home challenges that we've got and we also want to make it easy to install and flexible if we want to extend it out so we're seeing very much a, a change in, in in people's thinking about you know, where do we work? What do we need for home working? And how do we do this kind of work life balance? So what I'm now going to interest, uh, introduce to you is, is our Wi Fi um, products, and how you can use these in a highly flexible way to hopefully, you know, meet these demands. So the first one I'm going to introduce is a product called the AP802. You can't quite see it on that. But if you if you look behind that, there's actually a three pin classic plug socket on there so the idea behind this is it's one device you can put it in a plug it can fire up immediately it connects to your um, central or main access point or possibly your Wi-Fi router and effectively extends the network or adds a, adds a mesh to your network which I'll cover a little bit later on so I regard this as a fairly straightforward get you out of trouble type product where I need what I need Wi-Fi in this other room I can't get it buy this product plug it in the wall and you've got the Wi-Fi that position doesn't work too well well don't worry unplug it and plug it somewhere else so you've got loads of flexibility or maybe you need Wi-Fi in one room occasionally not very often again use this plug it in the wall and you kind of got it so it's a really really good flexible product for that the next one is our it's a very high powered uh, access point called the AP903 uh, this uh, is, is uh, whilst it looks a little bit industrial, whilst it what, what what it loses on looks, it makes up for its capability. So we have um, places, organisations, homes that are using one of these devices to reach three floors. I know we have B and Bs, for example, where you've got it on the on the first floor, and this permeates the first floor, the upper floor, and the lower floor. So it's a very very powerful device. If budget's a bit of an issue. And you want to restrict the amount of access points you use this could be a really really good uh, access point to use in that situation we've also got a couple of ceiling mounted devices these are a little bit more pleasing to the eye they look a bit like smoke alarms P probably when you think access point you might think of this particular design we've got the 912 which is our standard product uh, works with the rest of them and we've just launched a new one called the ap960 which introduces a uh, a new high-speed technology called Wi-Fi 6. Now, there's not time to go through this in great depth today. I will touch on it, but actually, if any of you interested, we've just issued a blog today that tells you all about Wi-Fi 6, which, in, which we'd encourage you to take a look at. So just when we start talking about Wi-Fi and, and the flexibility of products we, we, to use, I just want to take this another stage. So what we saw with social distancing is that a number of organizations stayed open so supermarket schools hospitals and uh, hospitals and warehouses and we're now starting to see phased reopenings reop hopefully in the coming months of other organizations and of course whilst these will be open it's fairly clear social distancing is going to be with us for quite some time even after all the restrictions go hopefully on the 21st of june i think it's, it's fair to say we're still going to have this social distancing i think it's going to be a sensible way of, uh, of going forward so not only are we trying to take, make the most of uh, internal spaces, but also we want to um, take advantage of external spaces as well. So indoors, we want coverage of maybe Wi-Fi on more floors, wider, you know, more buildings, more connection points. And of course, outside, we may want to extend it to other areas as well, whether it's extending in a pub car park or maybe it's outside the building. 
Uh, I can think of a whole range of reasons why you might want that, you know, connecting to the bond of the garden. So we want uh, a longer range, we want to connect things together, um, and we want to sort of, you know, support all those customers that want access to Wi-Fi wherever they are. And so I'm now going to introduce two more specialised products that can help on that. One is the Viger AP1000. This is designed for high density, high footfall type environments. So uh, places where you've got a lot of people mulling around, a lot of people connecting and disconnecting from, from, from Wi-Fi. So schools would be obvious, um, healthcare would be obvious, care homes, pubs. I'm sure you can think of many environments where that might be applicable. So the Viga AP1000 is good for that. And we also have a range of ruggedized devices that you can put outside that will survive the, you know, the, the, the heat and the cold and the rain and all the rest of it. Uh, 918 series is really good for that. Um, not only can you use this to sort of permeate Wi-Fi, let's just say on a pub garden or something, but you can set it up in a kind of point to point mode where if you've got line of sight, you can sort of direct your Wi-Fi connection, maybe from the house and a, maybe an office at the bottom of the garden or something. It's really, really perfect for that. So two other two other pro products there. Uh, so I've talked about different products. Uh, a great thing about a Draytech range is you can mix and match these together. Maybe you want to connect to the bottom of the garden. Yeah, maybe you need that 903 for the major connection around the house or business. And maybe you need that little 802 plug to get you out of trouble in the attic or something like that. Um, the neat thing is all of these can work together on the same network. And we, we call this uh, method of connecting it all together something called mesh. Uh, this is a kind of flagship feature. And why is mesh important? Well, traditionally, when you're managing a wireless network, you need to cable it all up. So you need to run a cable from maybe your switch or your um, router, you know, to the ceiling to connect an access point to it. And if you've got three or four access points, there's an awful lot of cabling involved. So it's got to be you've got to drill through walls. It's quite costly to do. You might you might need specialists to do it. So it can be done. It's very effective when done, but it can be a bit of a pain to do. Uh, mesh enables you to effectively achieve the same thing, but without laying all those cables. So it makes it easier and it makes it less expensive. And I've got a there is other webinars on mesh, but essentially there's a kind of hierarchy. You set up one device as what we call the uh, mesh route, which is like the, the controller, if you like. Uh, it could be a router or it could be an access point. And then you can sort of daisy chain or virtually daisy chain through Wi-Fi access points off it. And I think this diagram here probably shows it slightly better. Um, so from the main access point, you can connect up to seven different access points. Uh, it could be the same access point or it could be a mixture. And the maximum is kind of three hops. So you can sort of daisy chain up to three, which, uh, you know, to be honest, most organizations, yeah, it, it is more than enough. And, and to be honest, seven access points for most organizations is probably enough unless it's a very, very large building. So that's a really, really neat way of connecting your access points together in a nice controlled way. Um, just another thing I'm going to sort of introduce now is once you've got your network in place, you may want to kind of segment it. So a classic way that businesses or even home users might want to segment the network is they want, you know, uh, office workers as part of the company to log on to a particular network. But of course, if you want guests, if you've got guests, you may want them to log on to a slightly different network, which bypasses all the uh, all the office stuff. And there's a concept if you look on the right there of having a kind of staff network and a guest network. Um, for those who are not aware, we call these names SSIDs. So when you when you go and fire up your laptop and you want to connect to something, what you'll basically see is something called an SSID that you connect to. And what you can do here within the total mesh network is select a particular SSID. In this particular case, we've got guest, and you can connect that to a VLAN. I'll cover a little bit of that later on. And if it's on a VLAN, it basically segments it from all the rest of the network, and you've got high security there. Uh, I'm going to just introduce Wi-Fi 6 now, and now we actually did a webinar on Wi-Fi 6, which is available on our on our uh, portal. Uh, you, can, you can look at that. We look at our Draytech website to see this. And again, I can't really do it justice today, but this is the latest and greatest Wi-Fi. Key features on this are that it's got much more capacity. So essentially, you can get far more traffic, and far more different types of traffic 
uh, through a, a Wi-Fi access point. Uh, interference is now becoming a big, big feature of many environments now, and it's really because access points are popping up everywhere. And of course, when you fire up a device, smartphone, whatever it might be, you see all these uh, SSIDs, these these wireless networks, and the more there are, the more the congestion, the Wi-Fi signals interfere with each other. So you might think loads of access points is great, but actually it can be a real major net, net um, real major problem uh, with interference and. Uh, with Wi-Fi 6, you've got this thing called BSS colouring, which gives you far more options uh, for channels, which means there's far less interference. So that can be a huge, huge benefit. Better performance as well and better security. So I think it's the way of the future. It's not, not a necessity, but we are now bringing in Wi-Fi technologies into our into our products. There. I should also say that Wi-Fi 6 is backwards compatible with the other Wi-Fi standards as well. So you can put this in. Uh, and be sure that uh, non-Wi-Fi 6 devices can connect it as, as well with the old technologies. I'll just do a bit of bit of a, an ad here. We've, I think, li literally today uh, we've issued a blog uh, all about Wi-Fi 6. It's called Technical Turn is 802.11ax. For those of you interested, this is written by our Draytech CEO, a guy called Michael Spalter. You know, but very. Uh, technically where I'm competent. He's uh, written a number of books and articles on a whole raft of subjects. And the latest one today is all about Wi-Fi 6. So if you're really interested in that and you want to do a deep dive, why not take a look? Uh, go on to draytech.go.uk, you go to the knowledge base and you'll see there's a, there's a, a drop down on blogs. Click that and this will be the first one that you see. So I really recommend you see that if you want a deeper dive into Wi-Fi 6. Right, so let's just summarize the access points. So we've got the uh, 802 plug version, 903 uh, classic access point view, and then you've got the 912, which is the ceiling mounted one. The, you know, for all, all your standard Wi Fi requirements, those are the ones to go for. All work really, really well together. For more specialist, ruggedized, uh, we've got the 918 series. And for high density, or for those of you that want Wi-Fi 6, we've got the 1000 and 960. Let's say all part of the same family, all meshed together. Uh, we encourage you to take a look and pick the ones that suit you best or the combination of the ones that suit you best. And just got a little bit more on to managing Wi-Fi networks. I touched on this when I talked about SSIDs, uh, particularly when you're sharing Wi-Fi amongst the family or in businesses. You do want to think about, you know, how do I make sure I segment this such that the people that really need the high speed internet get it? And how do I set these things up so I've not got congestion with the next door neighbor who's got a, you know, a, a Wi-Fi network that's interfering with, interfering with you? So what we recommend is to segment the traffic using this thing called SSIDs or basically different Wi-Fi networks. Now with a Draytech solution, you can have up to four SSIDs. And the classic recommendation we do is that you have like a uh, a business SSID and a guest SSID, or in the case I've got here, I'm thinking you might be at home, you have like, you know, the family SSID and maybe the work SSID. So when people are seriously working, uh, they get the SSID uh, with the VLAN that gives you the fastest connection. So we recommend two, and you may want to segment this further by two others. And just a little bit technical now, we've got this 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz dual band uh, networks. Now, uh, these are basically different types of Wi-Fi uh, technology. The 2.4, good news is that that reaches a lot further, but it's a slightly slow speed. Um, the 5 gigahertz tends to have much faster speeds, but doesn't reach quite so far. So what you'll typically find is there's a, there's a trade-off between the two. If speed isn't particularly important and you want to get Wi-Fi everywhere, 2.4 could be the answer. If high speed is absolutely really, really critical, you probably need to go for uh, 5 gigahertz. But that may mean because of the shorter reach, you need more access points. So just like uh, all things, there's always a kind of trade-off there. So we encourage you to take a look at that and figure out what's best for you. And just final, finalizing this, the other, other thing you can get with Wi-Fi is you've got lots of access points and of course people can come in and log in and start wandering around. So there's a roaming feature here that means when you move from one access point to another, you know, you've got a strong strength on the first access point, you move to the second one, and then that's, that, that, that strength from the access point you first logged into starts to become weak. 
um, the system will effectively unclip you from the now weaker connection and connect you to the stronger connection without you having to log in a second time. So that's a really, really neat feature as well. There's a great comparison chart here across all the products. Again, it's all available on the website. Go into products, look at comparison, you see this. I'm not going to go through all of these, but you've got the complete range. It shows you um, speed on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and the total throughput and so on and so forth. So that's a really, really good thing to look at if you want a quick view on what product does what. I just got a little bit technical here on, on, on VLAN just to show you one technical thing you can see. On this particular situation here, we want an internal wireless and a, and a guest wireless network. So we've got two SSIDs, internal and guest. And then in the in the VLAN configuration, what you can effectively do is set uh, one uh, network or my homework uh, up to represent uh, when you connect to the physical ports on a on a on a router. So it's P one, two, three, and four, and that links to a specific SSID. And you've got the second VLAN, which in this case is uh, my home family. So the family network that goes into something something we call VLAN subnet two. Uh, and all, anybody that connects to that will go down that separate sublet. So this is a, a way of using VLANs to segment the network, linking into SSIDs. Again, a little bit technical, a little more complexity there. We've got loads of webinars on that. Just kind of shows you the strength of it. So now I'm going to move on to the third product set, which is is all about our switches range. So you know, often get asked, you know, how do you get the most out of connectivity at home? And and, and really, we we say, you know. If, if maximum speed at all times is really what you're after, plug it in, plug a cable in, you know. Um, you know, wired is always going to be probably faster and more reliability than Wi-Fi. But Wi-Fi is really, really good for convenience and actually is getting faster and faster now. So, you know, if you've got devices that are quite close to a router, well, easiest thing to do might be just to plug it in with a cable. You may not need to worry about Wi-Fi. And also, maybe, um, um, you, you may, maybe you may need switching where you've got problems with power cabling. So, for example, if you literally cannot find a plug to plug your um, access point into, so it's hard for you to use it in that mesh mode, maybe power cabling is a better option. So, if you using PoE, you can use an Ethernet cable to pass power across it and connect to a to an access point. You've got a colleague of mine putting a uh, an access point on the ceiling there, which plugs into a device. So switches can be very useful for these reasons. Um, so Dratic have a, have a switch range running from eight to 50 ports, depending on the environment. Uh, now up to gigabit speeds and 10 gigabit speeds, which is really good. We've got those that support power of Ether, those that don't. Again, not time to go this in great detail today, but we've got three examples in the range there. We've got a, an eight port PoE switch at the bottom there called our P1085. And we move up the range of PoA to one at the top. You can just see it there. It's the 2540X, which is our uh, 10 gig uh, 50 port PoE switch. So we've got a big, big range of switches there. If you're looking at switches, you look at the product code, it can be confusing to people as to what it all means. So I'm just going to try and simplify that. So we've got a product here called the VSP2280X. So what on earth does that mean? Well, so the VS means Viga switch. So the first thing you see indicates, indicates whether it's gigabit or PoE. So VSP means it's PoE. Uh, the next digit indicates whether it's a fully managed switch or smart managed. If it's a one, it's smart managed. If it's a two, it's fully managed. So VSP2 means it's power over, over Ethernet, fully managed. The next two, two digits indicate the amount of ports. So on this situation here, the 2280 has 28 in the middle, that's 28 ports. And the final one is the iteration, or so the second to last one is the iteration. So uh, which one in the series is this particular one? So this is the first one in the series, so it's got a naught denoting that. And finally, the thing at the back indicates, the X indicates whether it's 10 gig capable or not. So X equals 10 gig, no X equals 1 gig. Um, Sorry, I pressed the wrong, wrong button then. So there we go. So VSP2280 it means it's a Viga switch. It's got PoE. It's advanced. It's got 28 ports. And this is the first iteration with 10 gig. So hopefully that takes the mystery out of the product sets. So typical applications. Here we've got a, a 1085. A load of stuff you can do with this. Um, 
good feature about the PoE products is they've got what they call a very high um, WAN um, PoE budget, which means there's a lot of electricity coming out of the PoE ports. So on this, you can power up to eight devices. And on this example, we've got an access point powered or two access points powered. We've got an IP phone. And we've got a CCTV camera as well. Really good to extend the switch capability and provide PoE to all those devices. And just to give you an idea on the switch range, again, we haven't got time to do it all today. If you go on to drake.co.uk, click on switches, you can see there's a big, big comparison chart here. So, um, you know, eight to 50 ports, um, some 10 gigs, some not, some PoE, some not. Uh, you can see there the amount of ports, all the different things they do, all the management, and hopefully that's a very good, simple guide to see um, which one to use for your particular environment. So key, to, key features, uh, a range of ports, um, PoE and non-PoE, a very high power budget on PoE, so you can you can use all the ports for putting PoE devices on. Um, VLAN for network segmentation and very neat dynamic VLAN, so this will also sense the type of device that's attached to it and apply a VLAN accordingly for video and voice. Really, really good that to make sure you've got good quality of service for these business class applications. I'm just going to introduce a uh, Internet of Things feature here. Um, we will know that, that IP, CCTV cameras have seem to be taking over the world now. Loads and loads of people are using them. And many individuals and organizations now want to sort of uh, incorporate them in the network. They all tend to be PoE. And we've got a, a neat feature called, uh, uh, which is basically IP uh, camera management within our switches. This gives you a number of things that are really, really useful for CCTV. PoE management, so you can sort of recycle um, PoE ports that might have reboot an rebooted device, which might be quite useful. Uh, are going to get you out of trouble if a device doesn't seem to be working pro uh, properly. Um, there's there's auto automate. It's, it's automatic to connect a IP camera to a VLAN, and it's automatic to put it on a particular level of quality of service to ensure it gets good priority over the network. And there's a feature called OnVIF, which is a uh, industry standard. Uh, that enables you to more uniquely identify the type of camera that's being connected and see the technology, see the topology of it. Um, it enables you to change basic camera settings, and you can see what the video feed is. Uh, if, uh, for example, if a problem, if, if there's a problem with the camera, it will do, you know, just before it died, snapshot of what went on, which is quite useful if you're trying to. You see somebody obviously walking menacingly, menacingly towards a camera. That could be the reason why the thing failed, and you can capture that. So other things like IP conflict, very, very useful in this in this feature as well. So that's a great thing. Um, you know, it's more than just a switch. It's something that helps you manage uh, a growing Internet of Things environment. That's just one example of many that you'll see in Drake Tech products. So finally, we're going to work on, on HQ standards. So we, we've, we've talked very much about remote sites. We've talked about routers, Wi-Fi switching, why you might need them. And now we're going to talk about um, higher grade head office solutions where we, we want to sort of concentrate all the connections coming in and manage it properly. And I'm going to introduce a, a flagship product called our Viga 3910 High End Firewall. So this is a 10 gigabit um, VPN concentrator. Uh, it will support up to 500 VPN tunnels, 3.3 gigabits uh, of performance, up to 200 SSL VPN tunnels. That's uh, using mobile mobile VPN. Um, really good, reliable products. Huge bunch of features available in this. Uh, one is something called high availability, where you can have two two devices together um, for not only uh, broadband failure but also potential hardware failure as well. So, really good product. We'd encourage you to take a look at um, if you want that HQ solution. I've got a few examples there. You can see the amount of ports it's got and we've got this connected to a whole vast range of services. So it could be connected to, to a device that connects to 4G. It could be connected to DSL through a modem. You could connect it to Ethernet and you could connect it to fiber through the SFP thing. So multi-WAN, multi-LAN, high-speed concentrated, really, really good for those HQ applications. But not to get other, forget other products as well. Many, many HQs don't need to terminate 500 uh, VPNs, it could be a few. And in that case, there's no reason why you can't take a look at these products. The 2865, commonly used in branch offices, actually quite good for smaller H office, head offices. Similarly, then 2927 FTTB could be a good um, product for that. And we've got a 
a sort of baby brother of the 3910 called the 2962, which would do up to 100 VPN tunnels. Again, quite quite useful for uh, lower requirement HQs. I know we use we use these in multi multi occupancy offices. I know. Uh, sometimes used in places like halls of resident, residence for students. So please do have a look at those as well. Now going to look at uh, whistle stop to uh, uh, remote management. So I'm aware I'm just about at the 45 minutes now. Um, there are three ways to manage Draytech products. The easiest uh, and effectively one that comes free is basically you can manage all devices from a router. So if you buy one of our routers, you'll be able to manage our switches and access points from it really for free as part of the standard firmware. Um, if you've got a switches environment or sorry, a, an access point environment with switches, we've got a free, free piece of software called Vica Connect you can use to manage it. And for the bigger, more sophisticated uh, situations, maybe you're a, a large reseller with many, many different customer sites, or you're a very, very large end user with thousands of sites, Vica ACS might be the central tool for you. Um, for router-based management, again, I'm not going to go through any great depth today. Uh, if you look at WLAN setting down there, you can see there are individual access points being managed. You can see their IP address and device name. Uh, you can set them up accordingly from the router. Similarly for switches, you get a hierarchical view of the switch network. You can see things like uh, the number of ports, what's used, IP addresses, naming, and so on and so forth. So a very, very quick and easy way of managing your switches. Uh, Viga Connect is a free piece of software where you can manage up to 100 access points. So you probably remember early on when I talked about um, mesh, I was talking about potentially managing up to seven access points. If you've got several more than that, it may well be that Viga, Viga Connect remote managing is the answer for you. And the final scene or dancing is our ACS um, solution. This is available in a hosted version. Uh, or a cloud version, or you can buy the license yourself and install it. Uh, huge use of Google Maps, so you can see topologically where everything is, full use of color, you know, green means good, red means no. You can drill down to specific network or a specific device to see what's going on. This gives you huge information about numbers of users, um, data being sent across, uh, uh, broadband usage, and so on. So really would encourage you to take a look at that if you're managing much, much larger networks. So to summarise, um, working within the new normal to work and play at home. So I've talked about a lot of the a lot of the issues that are associated with <clears throat> what we call the new new normal. Uh, clearly, a lot of the things I've talked about do work and are, are hopefully very useful for the new new normal. But I'm sure many of you can extend that to many many other many many other walks of life where these type of features might be useful. So you need business class networking, you're talking about broadband failover, you're talking about quality of service, you're talking about talking about making sure everybody's got the right level of broadband connection they need. You really do need a business class solution and obviously we would recommend Dratex the answer to that. Um, if you need that reliable comprehensive Wi-Fi coverage with different ways of connecting things together and different classes of product to meet the need, come and have a look at Dratex. Uh, we've got that traffic prioritization for content. We've got the security through VPN. We've got that high internet speed now with multi, you know, high gigabit connection with that reliability, reliability and consistency. Dratech hopefully is a great solution for you. Um, so those are the products, um, range of um, sort of remote sites, small head, head office products at the top, and we've got the firewalls at the bottom. Uh, we've got all those access points. I've talked to them in great depth today. Um, the wall mounted version, the ceiling mounted version, Wi Fi 6, all the rest of it. And you've got that full comprehensive range of switches. And you've got the different router management as well, or different um, device management. The router, uh, Viga Connect for the multi multitude of access points, and you've also got ACS as well. Okay, so I'm about out of puff now. Um, I think my colleague Melanie is now going to come. I think I did that in 49 minutes, so I was four minutes late, so apologies for that. But I think my colleague Melanie is going to join us now yes. and uh, just talk a little bit about uh, how you can get this information after and what's, what, what's, uh, what's to come. So I'm going to leave you for a couple of minutes. I'm going to have a look at some of the questions and I'll come back to host the Q&A. So Melanie, you can give my voice a rest and take over. Over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Julian. Great presentation. Thanks for uh, taking us through the whole Draytech solution. Um, so I just wanted to quickly remind everybody that's on this uh, call right now um, all the great ways in which you can find additional resources to help you 
um, bone up on your knowledge of Draytech solutions. So if you go to draytech.co.uk, first up, we have a section for our webinars. So in the video section, under the knowledge base, you'll be able to find webinars as well as some promo videos. Um, if you go into the product section of our website, not only can you get product information, but you can get some really great comparison charts to kind of quickly help you um, learn about um, our products and how they vary from model to model. Um, we also have a lot of great information about our remote management uh, systems um, and ways to which to connect with us, not only to um, learn about it, but to request, you know, personal training um, and to learn a bit more if you're a dealer about some uh, exciting offers we have for it. Um, and, and kind of following on about that, about dealers, um, we also have a specific section for our dealers. Um, once you become an authorized dealer to log in and then you'll find a host of additional um, dealer owner webinars and information accessible there, as well as some more training classes um, within that section. But um, just just to, to end here, um, through after this uh, event, uh, you will receive an email and we'll have links to, to all these resources within there. Um, Julian, if you could go to the next slide, please. Um, I just want to give you a heads up on some upcoming Draytech webinars. Um, invitations will go out shortly, um, probably in the next day or so. Um, but during the month of March, we have three uh, webinars slated. We have one that will be about how to um, create remote dial-in VPNs, always a hot topic. Um, and this will go a bit more technical detail um, about about how to do that setup. Um, for our dealers, we'll have a dealer marketing update. Um, and then lastly, we'll have a longer technical presentation just focusing on switches and trying to go over some unique features within our switch range. All right, and with that, I'll pass this back to Julian. Thank you very much indeed, Melanie. Well, I, we've had some really, really good questions, actually. We're delighted with some of the questions we've been asked here. And I think um, to join me in the q and I think Alex is going to join us now. So Alex is our, is our CTO. Hey, Alex, Hello, Julian. You there? Hopefully you can hear me. I can hear you fine. I can hear you fine. Yeah. So we've got some really good questions here, actually. First one is, is a brilliant one. So we talked about 4G, about being, you know, the solution for backup if the main line fails. But actually, great question here. You can have many situations where, where you may want to use 4G as the primary. I can think of loads of examples where you want to pop up broadband or maybe, you know, the broadband providers haven't got around to giving you a decent, decent terrestrial line. So the question is, you know, could you have 4G actually as the primary connection? Yes, that's a, a good question, Julian. Um, it, we're increasingly seeing that in some situations, people, if they're, I don't know, unlucky or lucky, depending on your point of view, can find that they can get a faster 4G connection than, than maybe their ADSL connection that if they don't have, have BDSL. But you do have complete control over um, how you do the routing because there's a, a function called the, the Draytech route policy that allows you control over which is the primary route and what define and defines what happens if the one fails. So you can have it so that the 4G is the primary routes over that and only goes to the uh, other connection if that one fails. So there's a lot of flexibility and also you can add uh, something called metrics in. There's some more information uh, on a website um, uh, in the guides on the Draytech site. So what I'll do is I'll post that to the chat so people can look at that if they want to find out more details about, about that functionality. Thanks, thanks, Alex. Yeah, I think another sort of supplementary question that is, um, you know, you've got your high speed internet connection, you know, going at, you know, whatever it is, 100 meg or something, uh, and then you get a failure and it's going to go to what's probably going to be a much slower 4G connection and that might upset you know some of the quality of service that's going on so i guess the question is does the quality of service get adjusted to make sure um the the connect the the, the connection is now balanced for the new slower speed so you can uh, set QoS rules that can prioritize certain traffic. So the QoS works in a, in a dynamic way. So it will look at the available bandwidth and the connection speed and automatically do adjustments for that. So it can, can, can take care of that. But also you do have the control to decide what sort of traffic fails over. So in some cases you might decide that certain types of traffic you don't want to fail over if you do have a, a limited uh, bandwidth on the secondary connection so you can cater for those sort of scenarios if you want to make sure that only certain devices fail over and other yeah. ones don't uh, if you wanted to make sure yeah. that the critical systems keep the connection but other ones yeah, maybe so uh, don't have that 
Yeah, so you may have like plan A for normal service and then maybe a plan B if you've got a slightly slower connection. Oh, God, yeah. You. yeah. Uh, all right, another great question. I'm glad someone's picked up on this because I, I think the wireless WAN functionality is fantastic. It's one of, my, one of the features I really, really like. Um, so the question here is, which models support the wireless WAN functionality? That, so that was basically the, the main connection fails and you can piggyback on somebody else's network or your Wi-Fi hotspot. Yeah, so which models support that, Alex? Yeah, it's a really quite a neat feature and it's good for getting getting you out of a, a sticky spot sometimes if you find that there's, there's no physical line uh, that you can use, you can piggyback off something. So the models that are supported is, is pretty much any of the um, ACRN units in the 2926, 2927, 2862 and 2865 range. So that's all the, the business class routers. It's not unfortunately available in the 27 range. So the 2762 and 2765 don't support it, but uh, all the um, 29 and, and 28s that I've listed do. Yeah, so the kind of business business class routers we spoke about today mm -hmm. support that, yeah. that functionality. Okay, that, that's cool. Okay, I, I think probably fairly obvious question here. We talked about 4G. Obviously there's a lot to talk about 5G as well. So. Uh, there's a question about 5G support in the products um, and when that's likely to come through. Yes, um, we are working on uh, getting a, a 5G product, so that's something that we will uh, announce once we have some more news. We don't have anything announced at the moment or, or any roadmaps we can share currently, um, but, but rest assured we will have 5G um, products in the future. It, it's worth mentioning the, the current one, the 4G, um, that they don't support 5G. Uh, it's, it's, it's different chipset, so, so the 4G products are uh, for 4G, not for 5G. Okay, cool. So another question relates to the what's what's known as the the, the big switch off by BT. And some of you, we, we actually did a webinar on this uh, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, on uh, BT are going to are going to basically um, stop providing phone lines over the over the classic broadband connection. And uh, instead of uh, DSL, we've got some new terms to to, to come to get to groups with. So the first one is kind of Sagia, which is a uh, it's going to be VDSL without the phone line. Um, so uh, when BT switched this service off. The question is, which Draytech models support um, Sagir? There's also Sogfast and a few others that relate to Gfast. So I guess when when uh, when BT switch across, uh, which products are going to support these new services? And I guess will a new product be required? Yes. So the um, Sagir service you've mentioned mm -hmm. is is basically a VDSL connection uh, offered from OpenReach's VDSL based fiber to the cabinet network uh, but doesn't have the, the voice line on it as well it is um, something that is compatible with our products because it, it has the same technical requirements for the for the physical kind of VDSL layer uh, follows SYN 498 which is um, kind of a well-established spec for, for OpenReach's network so any of our products that currently support VDSL uh, would, would also support Sajir uh, already yeah, it's good. In fact, uh, so we did a we did a webinar a couple of weeks ago. If you want a deep dive on that, actually, if you look at the blog section I referred to earlier, where you, you can get this latest blog on Wi-Fi, there's two there on on BT turning the line off. So if you really want to understand what's going on there, we encourage you to have a look at those blogs. They're very very good, very comprehensive. I'm sh confident it will, it will answer every question you have. So we encourage you to do that. Uh, okay, so I've got a question on VPN here. So people, someone's asking for supporting people working from home, what device would we recommend for the office to allow people to VPN into? So I think I spoke about, you know, remote routers and maybe the um, the remote client, but what, what's the central concentrator that people um, would be would, would direct them towards? Okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, increasingly we're finding businesses are using cloud services like like Office, Teams and Zoom and those sort of things, but there's still those legacy systems where you've got file servers that are in the office that people need to get access to. So, um, it's an increasing question. We're finding IT support asking, looking to make sure that their um, routers support the remote workers they've got and also they're finding that rather than catering just for three or four remote workers it's almost potentially the whole company that, that can dial in so the 2865 has some good increases compared to the 2862 in, in ssl performance so it's got um, up to 130 megabits per second of SSL VPN performance and could support up to 16 simultaneous dial-in users. Um, so the reason I mention SSL is because it's a really common choice because it's quite widely supported by our iOS, Android, uh, Windows apps um, under the kind of smart VPN umbrella. So you can download those and install those on, on people's uh, devices. 
Uh, so that's quite good for for kind of up to up to 16. Uh, for larger installs, uh, we've got the 2962 and 3910, which are really good options, well placed to to help on the on the higher end of of, of requirements. With the 3910 supporting uh, one gigabit per second of SSL VPN performance and up to 200 users, so uh, that should be able to uh, cope with most things that's thrown at it. The 3910 doesn't support DSL natively. Uh, but you can add the Vigor 130 or 166 modems as a great companion products to give it DSL capability. It's multi-WAN as well, so you might find you've got kind of a main fiber connection and then you can have yeah. the, the, the DSL on as a, as, a, as a backup, but kind of that covers that. But if if you look at the spec page, we we list um, the SSL performance for, for most of the products on the in the spec section of any of the, the products. So um, just go on to an individual product and, and look in the specifications tab and it will show you the, the SSL performance if you want to, to look at that. There's also IPsec as well, which is normally higher than the SSL performance. Um, but uh, you can okay. look, look on look on the product pages for more information on that. All right, thanks. I'm doing aware of time. I think we're just about here to live. So we just did one more. So for everybody on the call on the webinar, so we do one more question, and then we'll close it. Um, so the I, I did a bit of a description on how you discover what a switch is by the uh, references. Someone's asked good question. How do you work out what router does what <laughs> by the by the numbering on it? So, um, yeah, yeah, that's a good They question, all roll off actually. the tongue, so, don't they? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer that one, Alex. Um, um, so, yeah, the, um, the a good rule of thumb on this is about the first two digits. So anything that's 28XX or 27XX is something that has DSL capability. So that's our, our DSL range uh, with the 28 being the business and the 27 being the slightly lower kind of Soho. Um, and so any of those will have support for, 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 for some form of DSL, typically VDSL. Um, and then anything that's 29 something something is kind of our forward range. So we'll have uh, RJ45 interfaces. The second two numbers are generally the generation of the product. So on the 28 series, we have the 2860, which was then superseded by the 2862. And then we followed up with the 2865. So it kind of increases in that way on the digits. Um, if you look on the product comparison chase, pages on the UK site, there's there's comparisons for the router switches and APs. So they're really handy and there's got bullet points so you can tell the different variants as well and and, and yeah. at a glance see. So I do recommend using that as a as a way um, if you're looking to give guidance to someone or wanting to find out what what product is suitable or what which is what, look on the the, the menu. Uh, there's a comparison for the routers, switches and APs and they really are a good good start for trying to find out what what functionality is, is in which product. Yeah, good, good one. I think yes, if you if you're dipping in and out of a dray tip, maybe occasionally, it's maybe difficult to remember. So that comparison that comparison uh, chart is really, really useful. Okay, I think we're going to close the call now. So thank you very much, everybody, for your time this morning. We appreciate you taking time time out your busy days to be with us today. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you go that gave, that gave you valuable information. We greatly appreciate your feedback. So please do complete the survey. Let us know what you thought. Um, it's that feedback that helps us uh, do more of these webinars and make them really, really relevant to you. So uh, thank you so much. This will be recorded. You will get an email afterwards um, showing you where to get all the various resources. So I'll just blow, close by uh, wishing you a good day. Keep safe. And we look forward to seeing you uh, next when we have our next webinar. Thanks a lot. Speak soon. Bye for now.